good Saturday morning. It is a good day because we're going trucking. We got to do an overnight to Saskatchewan. I haven't been to Saskatchewan actually in probably about a year or so. I haven't been there in a while. So even a trip to Saskatchewan is pretty exciting right now. We're not even going that far in. We're going to a town called Nipawin. It's actually about an hour north of the town to kind of a remote job site that we got to deliver some crates to. I got the crates at work already. Uh, we picked them up yesterday. I was actually supposed to leave with this yesterday, but uh, turns out they uh, they didn't want delivery on Saturday. They wanted on Sunday. As, as strange as that sounds, that's the way it goes sometimes. So we're gonna deliver it on Sunday tomorrow. It's about an eight hour drive from here, you know, plus stops and coffee breaks, obviously. We're gonna be driving a Kenworth T680, a nice big blue one, unit 42. It's a dark hole truck. Right, it's different getting here when the sun is in the sky. Eh? It won't be in the sky for long. Better make the most of it. Whoa, even my pickup's excited. <laughs> That's my city truck. It was supposed to have gotten the city horn fixed on it. The little baby horn was busted. We're taking this one today. Let's warm it up. Let's get it running. What's up, 42? We got a date. Our date got canceled yesterday, but we're on for today. While the truck's warming up there, I'll show you what load we're taking. It's these crates here on trailer 501. Real simple load. Real easy. There's three massive crates on there. The crates are about 20 feet long by three feet wide. So six feet across in the front, 20 feet long, and then I got another three foot and by 20 foot in the back there. So it's, it's like 20,000 pounds or something. Very light. So as soon as that truck's warmed up, we're gonna go hook on, go pick up our bean to cup coffee at Flying J on the way west. We'll head out to Saskatchewan. But this is a beautiful truck. I was telling you yesterday already that if, if I was back on the highway, if I ever go back and I wanted a comfortable luxury truck, the Kenworth T680 would be my first choice. This is my first trip ever, ever, that I've ever taken in a T680. The only time I've driven these things is to bring them into the shop in Winnipeg if they need some electronical issues or you know they, they need a Kenworth technician to look at it that's the only time I've driven it I've never pulled a trailer with them well, yesterday I did a little bit but this is my this is my first trip in one of these trucks if I were to buy my own truck it would obviously be a W900 from Kenworth but I am a huge Kenworth fan they are my favorite trucks this truck's very dirty as you can tell uh, the roads are very messy right now so it's extremely difficult to keep them clean and we do our best Let's hop in, let's give you a quick tour. And then I'll finish hooking up my trailer. This is a condo on wheels. The cab is fantastic. It's got the same gauge clusters or similar gauge clusters to the W9. More of an open format though. You guys have probably seen these trucks quite a bit already. This truck is an automatic, same system as the Peterbilt, same owners as far as I know. Uh, it's out of the way, keeps this whole space here open. I've got my garbage can there, my lunch kit, packed a lunch for today to save some panties, my backpack, my toothbrush and everything I need in there, all my detailing stuff. But I don't think I'm gonna need to detail this truck because it was just freshly detailed. It smells like a brand new truck in here. It looks like a brand new truck. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it that way, or even make it better when I bring it back if I can. I don't know if I can, this is pretty clean. It's got 888,861 kilometers on it, so it's got a little over 500,000 miles on this thing. This bed, like from here back, the sleeper, this is a condo. Look at this fridge here. It's a roll-out fridge. The shelving has been taken out for whatever reason, but you got like a big bucket in there right now you can use as your fridge. Fridge and freezer, it rolls out. It's just incredible. 
I want to stay in this truck. I like this truck. And check this out. Here, I've got my uh, my old headphones on here. These are the ones that I just take to the truck. They're not very good looking anymore, but check this out. When I want to edit my vlogs, here, there's a handle. Pull this handle. Look at this. Now I've got an editing spot right here. Look. Oh, it's been used a little bit, but I don't know, this is to be expected. How awesome is that? Here you've got a, a closet. I've just got my jacket folded up in there, but you can hang them up from up there if you got a hanger. Lots of natural light getting in here. And let me just put this back so it's out of the way. If you get up on the bed here, like every typical Kenworth, they have the big storage pods up here yet. I'm not trying to do an ad for Kenworth or anything. I just, I'm a really big fan of theirs. I really like it. Look at this from up here. Look at the size of that. Isn't that awesome? It's a, it's a special treat for me to be in this truck for a night. Let's see if we pull this top bed down. Let's see what it looks like. There you go. Now you got two beds. It's a pretty good bed up here too. <laughs> That's amazing. And there's enough clearance here that when I sit down, straight back, I just bump the top. So it's a little lower than the Volvos because the Volvos I can sit up straight and still have several inches of space between my head and the top bunk. But it's not uncomfortable. If you sit normally, I sit a little slouched. I know I shouldn't, but if I sit normally, then, uh, yeah, there's lots of space here. I can still have my table here to work. And if you got kids, you can bring the kids along, throw them up there for the night, or if you want to bring the wife along, there's two beds. Unless if you want to both cuddle up on there, I mean, there's lots of space. That's a big bed. However, I like to stretch out when I sleep. So there's two beds, whatever you want to use them for. I'll put this back up here. That's all you got to do. Just push it up in there. It locks in. <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. And then the gauge cluster here, you wanna see it. Very nice, very nice. I'm, I'm really impressed. You know, what's this down here? Extra drawer down there, you got two drawers down there. I noticed back here, the controls for the sleeper, big panel here. Plus more storage here for your phone to charge at night. That's nice. That's nice. Because then when you're sleeping, you just pop your phone in there. You plug it in here. Good to go. You got a button here for your fridge. I'm planning on putting some of my food in there later. So I'm, I turned it on now. You got your S-Bar bunk heater. Bunk lights. You got your door lock. So when you're in the sleeper going to bed here, and you're like, oh shoot, did I lock the doors? But you're in your boxers already. You don't have to get up and go check. No way, no, we're way too lazy for that. Locks the doors right there. <laughs> right? I know. Okay, I'm gonna get hooked up. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna go head on down the road, about an eight hour drive today and an eight hour drive back tomorrow after we unload. Here we go. Saskatchewan, here we come. It's not the longest trip, but it's long enough. Gets me out there on the highway, satisfies my itch for the road. Cause I'm a city driver now. I really enjoy the city position. So don't get me wrong when I talk about loving the highway. I love my position right now. But uh, I always, you always have that itch for the highway. Once you hit the road, you, you're you always gonna wanna be on the road. Meters, Karen? On highway 59. Yeah, I brought Karen along, unfortunately. Keep me company. But yeah, I get the itch for the highway. So every now and then uh, they throw me a bone and let me do one of these overnights. 100 meters, turn left on highway 59. And that's why I, I don't take weasel on these. Unless if it was more than an overnight, I'd ask if I could. But just for this, this truck is so clean and detailed right now. Diesel will be just fine being at home with his brothers and with Britt. 
He's got a big yard to run around in, you know. They'll, they'll, he'll be better off there. He's, he's fine. I'm going to be super nice and wait for these cars. I'm way too nice. I'm way too nice. I should not have waited. I should have just gone for it. But here we are. Not taking any chances. This is going to be a good day. It's going to be a good trip. It's 500 miles there, 500 miles back. I'm expecting it to take just a little over uh, eight hours. Are you all in the right lane? Okay, I'm taking the left lane then. Put my don't hit me signals on. Continue on this road for eight kilometers. Thought there was one more. There you are. All right, then I'll take my rightful place in the right lane. And we're officially off. Karen's telling me it's 794 kilometers to, uh, what's the town called again? I keep forgetting what the town is called. Nipawu? Nipanon? Nipanu, Nipanu, right? Nipanu. 800 kilometers to there, but then we gotta go another 85 kilometers or another 50, 55 miles past town into the wilderness and it's a remote job site. So I've got the phone numbers of the guys there if I need to find it or if I have trouble finding it. Got my bean to cup coffee. I'm ready to go. Ready to rock. We're just going through Eli, Manitoba here right now. I was gonna come past this guy, but uh, he decided to speed up. All right, that's okay with me. I'll just head in behind him then. I used to always stop at the Timmy's right there. I'll catch him again. We had to slow down for that intersection there. We're coming up to the town of Nipawa. If you've been watching long enough and if you watch every day, you'll remember when I was uh, in that Peterbilt still, the highway truck, we stopped in Nipawa and went for a walk around town. It's actually a nice little town. right on Yellowhead Highway. This is uh, Trans-Canada, our north Trans-Canada route. It's not a big four lane in Manitoba like Highway 1, but once you hit the Saskatchewan border, uh, you get a two lane. Come down into the valley here, and then up into town. Beautiful. I wonder what that thing is. A radio tower or antenna or something? <laughs> the compression brakes on this truck are very quiet. That's it. <laughs> so you could use them right in town and no one would even know. What does that say? Welcome to Nipawa, land of plenty. On a little hill here too. Look at this, a Manitoba hill. It's a hill town, Manitoba hill town. Look at this house. Lots of old architecture here too. I think there's an even better one coming up yet. We still have uh, 579 kilometers to go, about uh, six hours of driving at least. Since this is a two-lane road on the 16, uh, you gotta stop for things like this, traffic lights in small towns. But that's okay, that way you get to see more of it. You know, the, the new highways and bypasses, interstates in the US, they always go around the towns, right? They wanna save you five minutes here, two minutes there, 10 minutes there. But when you go around everything, you don't get to actually see it and enjoy it and soak it in. I think this is the old house. Is this the old house? Somewhere along here on the corner, I think it's on the left, there's an old house that I always love to look at. Is that it? Oh, got some nice Christmas lights out there. I don't think that was it though. Maybe I'm thinking of a different town. Yeah, it must be a different town. And if you're wondering if Nipawa has made it in civilization, 
The answer is yes. There's a McDonald's and a Timmy's. Even a Dairy Queen. Down the street, you got a Boston pizza. That is the essence of Canadian civilization. A co-op gas station, a chicken chef. What else do you need? Subway? Timmy's is just up here on the left. 7-Eleven? You got the beer store? <laughs> I love Boston pizza. Apparently it's a Canadian chain. I don't know why they call it Boston pizza, but really great restaurant. A little bit pricey. It's not something you want to go and do every day, but uh, it's my favorite. I used to always stop at them when I was on the road, whenever I, you know, on payday to treat myself a little bit. We got some action coming up here. We're about 10 minutes down the road from Nipawa. So we haven't gone very far since we last talked there. Oh, we got all kinds of flashy lights up here. Middle of nowhere, I wonder what they're doing. I'm seeing blue and red, so it's police, but it might be more than that. Or maybe he just has one person pulled over. I thought there was uh, more than one. Oh, it just looks like he's got someone pulled over. Okay. So it is Manitoba law that we have to slow down to at least 60 kilometers an hour when passing emergency vehicles like this. And when I can't leave my lane because of oncoming traffic, I like to slow down even more. Just to give the officer uh, a little more feeling of safety as he's out there dealing with whoever he had to pull over. I don't want him to have to worry about traffic flying past him as well, you know. Yeah, in Manitoba on a two-lane road like this, both directions have to slow down to at least 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour when passing uh, police officers, you know, ambulance, fire truck, obviously all those, and also tow trucks. If you see a tow truck or any amber lights flashing on the shoulder, you have to slow down. Big tickets if you don't. In Winnipeg, it's the law also, except in Winnipeg, you have to slow down to a minimum of 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles an hour when passing emergency vehicles or tow trucks within city limits. A lot of people don't know that because, uh, you know, when I was young, they didn't teach us that. Now they've started putting up uh, signs to educate people, including me. I always slowed down anyways, because that's pretty much the law everywhere else. I just assumed it must be the same here. Or they put up signs now and yeah, that's, people are learning, you gotta slow down. Even for tow trucks, that bugs me the most when people, they'll slow down for like police and emergency vehicles, but they won't slow down for a tow truck driver helping someone out of the ditch or picking up an abandoned vehicle or whatever he's doing on the side of the shoulder, helping someone. They won't. Why don't you slow down? Slow down. Yorkton, Saskatchewan. It's been a minute, eh? I like all your Christmas lights. A lot of people here decorating for the holidays. Every street, look at that. Every street's got more than a few. You're doing better in Steinbeck. I, I, I think I'm still the only one with Christmas lights, a decent display of Christmas lights on our whole street. It's kind of disappointing, you know? I was hoping I'd be kind of inspiring. Actually, you know what? Sorry. I need to include my neighbor, Tony. Him and I are the only ones with decent Christmas lights on our whole street. So like, we're one little festive area. But yeah, all the way down there too. I guess the camera's not really doing it justice. The fisheye lens make it, makes it look like it's so far away. But it is good to be back in Saskatchewan. You know, and you probably don't hear that very often. So enjoy it while you can. I love this dash. This truck is just huge, just ginormous. I love this truck.
We're coming up to Tisdale, Saskatchewan. About a half hour from uh, Nipponu. Nippawin. Nippawin. <laughs> I cannot get the name right. Nippawin. Karen still thinks we're going all the way up to Nippawin. However, I'm going to stop here for the night. I'm not sure. I was looking around there to see if I could In find. Uh, meters, whoa! Turn left onto Saskatchewan 3 West. Signs for Belfort. I forgot I had Google connected through my Bluetooth <laughs> speakers here. We're gonna stay here anyways in Tisdale. There should be some truck parking right over here. And then I gotta go wiggle the wires for my trailer ABS. I took a corner a little while the back. Next left onto Saskatchewan 3 West. Signs for Melfort. Then your destination will be on the left. Gotcha. That's pretty cool that it goes through the whole system in this truck. Man, I love this truck. Yeah, it's uh, it's just an issue with the plug. I'll go wiggle the plug around and that ABS light will turn off. I'll show you it before I go to bed. Or it'll turn itself off when I go around this corner. Because that's what it did around the last one. I hope that's the only problem. No, Karen, we're going to listen to Google and park right here. I'm going to go in the next one. Your destination is on the left. Oh, look, there's a Timmy's right over there. Perfect. Ha! We'll go there first thing in the morning. Oh, yeah, here's some trucks parked here overnight already. I'm just going to do a loop around the parking lot here and make sure that uh, there's no signs that say no overnight parking. Don't want to get a knock on the door in the middle of the night. Get out of here! I guess I could park right in here. I was going to park over there, but... Why park over there when I can park right here? I don't know if I've ever been to this town. Got a lot more snow here than we got at home, that's for sure. Good. All right. Uh, lights. Yes. I put lights in the back. Look at this condo I got behind me. Wow. I can't wait to crawl back there and go to bed. That is awesome. Okay, so before I do anything, I want to see if I can get rid of this trailer ABS light that popped on. Pretty sure I know what the issue is. Come with me. Okay. Pretty sure I'll be able to fix this nice and easily. So you see at the back, let's walk down there. There's that orange light right at the back there. That means the ABS light is on or something malfunctioned in the ABS system. I've told you this before already, but you can just unplug the lights. Plug them back in. And that should have fixed it. Okay, let's check on the dash. No, oh, it's still on. Okay, 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 okay. Let's try it again. There, finally. <laughs> it's just a uh, it was just a bad connection between the truck and the trailer on the lights, just like the other time. Just took a couple of times and wiggling around and then I had to, uh, on the trailer, sometimes if it's not connecting properly, you can uh, get a flathead screwdriver and very carefully and very gently, uh, there's, there's a little slit in the middle of it and you can put your 
flathead screwdriver in there and just twist it ever so gently. Just, you don't want to do too much, you'll break it, okay? It's no fun. Just spread the, spread the tongs, or the, whatever you want to call them, spread them just a little bit, and then it connects with the plug better. Did that just now, plugged it in. All the lights are working great. ABS lights off, it's just, it's just messing with me, all right? It's a Kenworth. No messing with a Kenworth. <laughs> but a Kenworth can mess with me, apparently. That's okay, I, for, I forgive you. I forgive you. You're just testing me. I see what you're doing. I see what you did there. It's just testing me. <laughs> I hate it when lights like that pop up on my dash. But with these trucks nowadays, you know, sometimes I'm pretty hard on Volvo, so I'll admit. I'm not, a, I'm not their biggest fan. Uh, I'm a Kenworth guy, and I'll accept a Peterbilt too. I like Peterbilt too, but Kenworth Peterbilt. Uh, so I'm a little hard on Volvo sometimes. I always bug them about their engine lights always being on. You know, any new truck nowadays, any new truck seems to always have a lot of electric issues with the electronics and, uh, you know, sensors and plugs and stuff. There's so many electronics on these new trucks. It's so easy for something to go wrong and for a warning light to pop on. And, you know, the warning light scares you. It says, oh no, something must be terribly wrong. And that's like nine times out of 10, it's just a loose connection. You just gotta figure out where it's not connecting properly, but yeah, at least it warns you when something's wrong and doesn't just let you, uh, you know, keep driving it until something explodes. That wouldn't be good. Oh, we got it fixed anyway, so now I can sleep soundly handy little editing station we got here. I don't know why I'm still wearing my vest. It's just a habit, I guess. It's sort of like my work sweater and work vest. I don't know. I want to make sure that I'm seen in the truck. <laughs> I'm about to hit the sack. I'm just getting all my files on the computer and we'll, uh, we'll worry about this later. I'm tired. I want to make sure I get rested. I'm going to be up at about 6.30 tomorrow morning. We have an hour and a half drive from here to our drop-off point at the customer, and then we have an eight to nine hour drive back home yet. So it's gonna be a full day tomorrow. So I wanna get started early. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it, and I'll see you tomorrow.